Mr. Chairman, welcome to the program once again. Hey, I'm happy to be back. Thank you for inviting me again, and I, and I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, uh, obviously, you know, uh, Rick Santorum is out of the race. Uh, New Gingrich reportedly out of money. It uh, looks like uh, Mr. Romney will be the Republican nominee. Can you please, Mr. Chairman, sketch out in, in rough terms uh, what will the Republican strategy for victory be in November? Well, first of all, you know, we're going to probably kind of see how this all shakes out over the next few days and few weeks. And and we've got a lot of work to do here before we start declaring anyone the official uh, Republican nominee. So obviously we've got to do that first. Um, and, and secondly, I mean, I think that the, the general election strategy has been very similar to what you've been hearing from us, which is the economy, jobs, and most importantly, Fernando, and I think we talked a little bit about this last time, I, I really do believe that this election will be a referendum on Barack Obama. This will be a, an, 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 a referendum on the promises and the, and the standards that Barack Obama made to the American people, using his words coming out of his mouth. What did he promise and what did he deliver? And I think that if we can clearly deliver that message to the American people, I think that we win in November because I think most Americans believe that we're not better off today than we were three or four years ago and that this president did not fulfill the basic promises that he made to the American people and because of that he'll lose. And and yet, uh, as we know, in, in all these kinds of elections where there's an incumbent president, uh, as much as it is a referendum on the, on the president, it's also uh, the alternative. Uh, and as uh, you probably saw in the Washington Post this morning, their new poll with ABC News shows a, a big gap um, uh, between uh, favorability, favorability ratings between the president and Mitt Romney, especially amongst women, but also uh, with other key groups. Um, do you see this as, as uh, problematic at this stage, or is, is this poll too early to really uh, tell us anything about the election? Well, I mean, all polls have some value, um, and I think that, to, you know, I don't really dismiss anything, but I, but I do believe that it's far too early to be worried about, you know, some of those, you know, head-to-heads and, and issues like that. You know, I, I think what you see on the Republican side is that when you're in a primary battle, it's very difficult to pull head-to-head -head results, Obama v. Romney, like that, because these guys have been really arguing with each other uh, in states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, whereas the president is out there every day, every night, on every channel of television basically campaigning to America. And so now, over the next few weeks, it's time for the Republican Party to start campaigning across America, too. And when, when you get a Republican nominee for president, it's at that time that you can truly go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an incumbent president. When you're having a primary battle, you know, it's, it's just more difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the, uh, yep. pr President Obama, uh, a couple of hours ago, speaking in Florida at a, what looked like a campaign rally, uh, called for the implementation of the so-called Buffett Rule, which essentially, uh, to shorthand it, uh, would uh, uh, change the tax code so wealthier people uh, would pay a higher percentage of their income in taxes than the middle class. Uh, from your point of view, is this good or bad policy? Well, for one thing, I think it's interesting, and, and, and you agree with me on that. It sure looked like a campaign rally to me, too. Unfortunately, when the president does those things, goes into Florida, and he does a rally, I don't know if you realize, or your listeners, that actually the taxpayers end up paying for all of that. They pay for a big portion of Air Force One and the travel down to Florida, and it's just a waste of taxpayers' money. But that's the second part. You asked the question mm -hmm. about policy, and I would tell you that, number one, um, the president has a, is kind of playing with a red herring here in that uh, the Buffett rule really amounts to peanuts when it comes to trying to tackle the bigger problem, which is spending and debt. And I think as a policy matter, there is a problem with couching this Buffett rule as some sort of tax on millionaires. The reality is, is that you're talking about 4,000 taxpayers, really across this country. And I'm not saying that we don't have loopholes that we, we don't need to close in this country. I think most Republicans would agree we do. 
the problem is is that when you when when you raise that tax, you're also clipping a lot of businesses across America that file as S corporations or pass through corporations. And the last thing we need to do is tax businesses in this country when we already have the highest tax rate in the entire first, you know, industrialized world. And so I think it has a negative effect on business and jobs and I think ultimately uh, the buffer rule isn't going to create a single job for anyone, and that's really the problem we have in this country. Now, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, Paul Ryan, Congressman Paul Ryan, uh, has become uh, uh, sort of the uh, symbol of uh, the Republican Party's new thinking or evolution of, of thinking in terms of taxation and how to bring the budget into balance. Uh, that uh, budget has been criticized, of course, by the Democrats as uh, lowering taxes on the wealthiest and, and hitting the uh, middle class and, and uh, lower income uh, people. Is, is that a fair assessment of the Ryan budget? And will um, uh, Mitt Romney has embraced it. Will this be the official Republican position in November? Well, I think most Republicans have embraced Paul Ryan's budget, but I don't believe that the budget symbolizes at least the, the, the premise of the question, which is, the budget is the, is, is the only real attempt out there, uh, either by the president or any person, to tackle the long-term debt and deficit problems that we're having in this country, lowering taxes on every American, uh, regardless of your income, uh, your taxes should be lower. We want everyone to, to, to have to uh, pay less, but we want people to have more opportunity for jobs. We want to be able to have companies expand. We want people making more money, not less money. And we want people to be able to, to believe again that if you work hard and you play by the rules, you can live the American dream. The Paul Ryan budget helps make that happen. On the contrary, if you look at Barack Obama, what happened to his budget? His budget was a sham. Not a single Democrat voted for Barack Obama's budget in the, co in the House. And a year ago, not a single Democrat in the Senate voted for Barack Obama's budget. And, and the problem with all of this, Fernando, is that what this all illustrates is that you've got Paul Ryan on one side being an adult and trying to actually do something in this country. And then you have Barack Obama on the other side that can't get a single Democrat to vote for his pr plans. You know why? Because his plans are just political documents. M Mr. Think? Chairman, I, I'm. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry uh, for a time. Uh, we're running out of time. Although I, 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 I don't want to interrupt you. But um, uh, Ryan's previous chairman of the Republican National Party. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Appreciate it much. God bless. Thank you, sir.